Hong Kongers are showing their support for media mogul and pro-democracy activist Jimmy Lai after authorities thro froze his assets. And another activist, Agnes Chow, has a new rallying cry of support behind her. NTD's Tiffany Maya brings us more. Now to Hong Kong. Local media reported that after the Hong Kong media mogul and democracy activist Jimmy Lai's arrest on Monday, Hong Kong police froze his assets worth around $6.5 million. The move was carried out by the city police force's new department, established to enforce Beijing's national security law. The Hong Kong-based Beijing-run security office said on Tuesday that it supported Lai's arrest. Lai has since been released after submitting nearly $40,000 in bail and over $25,000 in personal guarantees. On Tuesday, Hong Kongers flooded to a restaurant owned by Jimmy Lai's younger son, who was also arrested under the security law. Police raided the restaurant on Monday and seized the computer they found there. Residents say they were angered by Lai's arrest and Beijing's threats to Hong Kong's press freedoms. They said they wanted to show support and solidarity. And elsewhere in the city, Hong Kong activist Agnes Chow has a new rallying cry. Like Lai, the 23-year-old was also arrested under Beijing security law. Soon after, supporters rallied on Twitter, calling her the real Mulan. Fellow pro-democracy activist Denise Ho wrote on Twitter, Our Mulan, Our Pride. Others posed a comparison, asking who the real Mulan is, freedom fighter Agnes Chow or actress Liu Yifei, who plays Mulan in Disney's live remake but supports China's authoritarian regime. Actress Liu Yifei came under fire last fall after expressing support for Hong Kong police on social media. Many accused her of supporting police brutality. Many people were outraged, saying Mulan in the ancient Chinese legend was a true heroine who disguised herself as a man to take her aging father's place in the army, fighting to save her family and country. And it's not just the pro-democracy protesters who are outraged over the film. Disney's choice to stream Mulan angered a lot of cinema owners. In a video posted by a French film account, one cinema owner is seen destroying a Mulan pop-up. Movie theaters have been forced to absorb a massive blow from lockdown measures amid the pandemic. Many of them hoped blockbuster films like Mulan would help funnel money back in. Disney announced the live-action Mulan will be released on Disney Plus starting September 4th for those willing to pay $30 to watch it. The U.S. State Department said on Tuesday that more than 30 countries and territories have joined the Clean Network Initiative. According to the department, the program works to safeguard the nation's assets, including private information from individuals and companies from aggressive foreign intruders. It was created to address the long-term threat to data privacy, security, human rights and principled collaboration posed to the free world from authoritarian regimes like the Chinese Communist Party or CCP. It aims to clean and secure various areas of the tech sphere, including apps, the cloud, data carriers, and cable. As for the 30 countries that have signed on, there are the traditional U.S. allies and European Union countries of Australia, Canada, Israel, the U.K., Denmark, Norway, Sweden, France, and Greece. From Asia, Japan, Taiwan, and Vietnam are also on the list. Some Eastern European countries have also joined in, like the Czech Republic, Latvia, Romania, Poland, Slovenia, Estonia, and Albania, among others. The State Department added that many large telecommunications companies are now becoming clean telecoms. So far, all 5G telecoms companies in Canada, Norway, Vietnam, and Taiwan are refusing to do business with the CCP-controlled operations like China's Huawei. While in some other countries, including France, India, Australia, and Japan, part of their telecom companies have decided against working with Huawei. A new report shows the Chinese tech giant Huawei built a data center for the government of Papua New Guinea. But during its construction, the telecom company deliberately created security loopholes so the data could be stolen. Two years ago, Chinese telecom giant Huawei built a data center for the government of Papua New Guinea, or PNG. Because of that, the Pacific Ocean was in deep debt to a Chinese state-owned bank. 
who funded the Huawei project. Now, the data center was found to have serious security vulnerabilities, leaving PNG government data open for spying. A new report by the Australian Strategic Policy Institute suggested that Huawei deliberately created the security loopholes to help China spy on the country. According to an Australian media report, the firewalls and codes Huawei built for PNG government to encrypt their data had already reached their end of life in 2016, two years before the center opened. The Australian report is the first to document Huawei's involvement in Beijing's cyber espionage activities. The PNG government hired Huawei two years ago despite strong opposition from the U.S., Japan and Australia. The country's official at the time said whatever views Australia or the U.S. might have in relation to cybersecurity, as far as Huawei or China are concerned, those are for the big boys to worry about. We in PNG have no enemies. We would not be that stupid to reject it. Now the country is struggling to repay the $53 million loan to China and seeking funds from Australia to fix the dysfunctional data center. And Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in Europe urging previous Soviet countries to be wary of threats coming from China, Russia and others. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is calling on the young democracies of Central and Eastern Europe to embrace their hard-won freedoms. In a speech to the Czech Senate, he acknowledged threats to those freedoms from Russia, China and others. America's top diplomat thanked the Czech Prime Minister for the country's military cooperation with NATO. He also denounced the post-election violence and repression in Belarus. Taking particularly hard aim, he said the Chinese regime is an even bigger threat to democracy than Russia. Today, an even greater threat is the threat posed by the Chinese Communist Party and its campaigns of coercion and control. Pompeo also touched on the Chinese regime's human rights violations. As examples, he named the communist regime's hard grip on Hong Kong, its attempt to dominate the South China Sea, and the detention of about a million Uyghur Muslims in internment camps in Xinjiang. He said Huawei plays a big role in China's oppression. This is the human rights stain of the century, sustained by companies like Huawei using technology the secret police could only have dreamed of in times gone by. Pompeo said the CCP is already involved in U.S. and European economies, its politics and society, in ways the Soviet Union never was. He added that the CCP targeted Czech politicians and security forces with influence campaigns, thieved industrial data from the Czech Republic, and suppressed freedom in the country using its economic leverage. But he said freedom will win in the end. China's world dominance is not inevitable. We're the authors of our fate. Free societies have always been more attractive. Your people know this. Our people do, too. Pompeo told lawmakers in the former Soviet country they should resist the Chinese regime's attempts to claim economic and political leverage. Reflecting on several recent cases in which the Chinese regime threatened Czech officials with retaliation when the country showed support for Taiwan, Tibet and Hong Kong. His speech comes as part of a tour of the region, focused on concerns about European energy dependence on Russia and about security in advanced Chinese-owned telecommunications networks. The president of Taiwan is focused on building a strong relationship with the U.S. She spoke at an American institute addressing her top priorities. Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen says she wants to focus on starting negotiations for a U.S.-Taiwan free trade agreement. Good morning to you all. She spoke at the Hudson Institute and Center for American Progress, identifying several other priorities, including strengthening security between the U.S. and Taiwan, and working with the U.S. to improve relationships with other democratic nations in places like Europe, Asia, and Africa. We spoke with policy analyst Riley Walters at the Heritage Foundation. He says a trade agreement with Taiwan would be ideal, and that we should be engaging with Taiwan more on all levels. Taiwan just seemed like an ideal candidate. We should be doing more with Taiwan on how the U.S. and Taiwan should engage uh, beyond just trade. We should engage on more economic issues. U.S. Health Secretary Alex Azar visited Taiwan this week. He said his purpose was to, quote, highlight the deep partnership and friendship between Taiwan and the U.S. I think Taiwan has handled this pandemic really well. And so that's why Secretary Azar visited um, but, you know, it, the growing rise uh, and uh, complications that China has in the region are, are even more reasons why the United States should be engaging more with our friends and partners in the region, including Taiwan. 
President Tsai says her new Taiwanese representative to the U.S. has just arrived in Washington, D.C. to further discussions. Phil Zhou, NTD News.